And since we're talking about cellular and Wi-Fi, depending on once again who you talk to, there is also confusion. Hey, you know, this is the next step of Wi-Fi or this is the next step of cellular. But I think if I'm not wrong, it's going to be all three. There will be Wi-Fi, there will be cellular, and there will be, you know, 5G private network as well. So they will complement each other. And as you said, I mean, Wi-Fi, the current Wi-Fi, it has a lot of limitations. It's, so uh, 5G private network, they kind of bridge a lot of gap there. So can you also talk about uh, the role there? And also, uh, since you folks also work closely with a lot of users and customers, what kind of uh, uh, use cases or things that 5G private network allows companies, enterprises to do, which they could not do with traditional cellular and Wi-Fi? First of all, we do tend to fully operate in an adjacent space um, or, or even fully coexist with other technologies. This is not intended, you know, our solutions certainly, and a number of the other private wireless solutions out there are never intended to go and replace something like Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is, is fairly ubiquitous in the amount of devices you can connect to it. And there is some really strong use cases for Wi-Fi, specifically when you talk about, you know, connecting the office space, connecting laptops and, and phones and things of that nature for people who want to do their work on them. Where we bring that up a step further is when we want to talk about scaling up to connecting, you know, tens, hundreds, thousands of different devices. And we're talking about you know, possibly machine to machine type connections. So robots, sensors, et cetera, um, to a network, Wi-Fi simply can't scale to handle that type of demand, nor can you give individual devices the type of priority on the network they need. One of the big differences between Wi-Fi and cellular is that where a cellular is scheduled access, you know, Wi-Fi is basically a listen before talk platform that's looking for opportunities to transmit. That works fine when you're on your laptop or when you're doing you know, streaming video calls or anything like that. But when you have robots and sensors and devices that absolutely need to connect all the time, you have to have something that's more scheduled. You have to have something that's more reliable. So that's one of the big differences that we can, we can use something like private 5G for. Um, the other sense is the built-in security that comes um, with the authentication practice of 5G. Um, by using you know, eSIMs and programmable embedded SIMs, we can assure the right types of access um, with, with a very high level of security. Now, where we're going with that and where our use cases are, again, it goes back to connecting, you know, many, many, many different types of machines specifically to the network to allow a network operator, um, in this sense, it's the enterprise owner, to be able to manage all these devices, to be able to orchestrate which ones get connectivity when, what priorities they have, what types of content they're getting, and also because it's a private network, and this is important, all the data that's collected, stored, and actioned on within the enterprise is all local. We have a, a local you know, physical core presence in the enterprise. And so as you're collecting data and as you're using data, all that's right there effectively at the edge of the network. So now we can enable ultra low latency applications because we're not going back to you know, some content in the cloud or some content elsewhere on the internet. We're going local and we can have very, very high performing applications with high data reliability. 